Hey pilots, hope you're having a great week so far. Some good videos out there to catch up on and uh, some good uh, information about the new update. Uh, looks like we're getting a new reward plane from the next marathon, Tempest with massive cannons. That should be interesting. Uh, a couple of you have asked about uh, finding stats on planes. I think many of the longtime pilots probably already know this. If so, feel free to skip a little later down the video where we talk about uh, the good, good, interesting stuff and I need your help. Uh, uh, but if you're a beginner, just keep the keep the thing right here. And we're going to talk about um, finding detailed statistics uh, for your plane. Now, you can go to the World Warplanes website, uh, click on Warplanes, click on the nation, click on the type of aircraft, light fighter, you know, multi-role, uh, heavy fighter, etc. And then it'll show you modules and um, statistics, uh, but it doesn't show you everything. Uh, there's a limited amount of information there. And so many of us, when we want more information, come here to Game Models 3D. And uh, Game Models 3D shows us um, a good bit of, um, you know, kind of the, the interesting stuff that goes on here. So you can come to this website, GameModels3D.com, click on World of Warplanes, and it'll give you this. And uh, we have a new model in the game as of the update from this morning. So you can click on that, and it'll tell you a little bit about it. So we're going to go in here, and, and we can look at this one and look at some of the stats, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So we can see already it's going to have a decent turn time. You know, uh, this is a... Presumably it was tier eight, yeah, tier eight. Uh, so uh, that's a you know a little bit of a lower speed for tier eight, I think. Uh, it's not too bad actually. Um, medium altitude, decent stall rate. Um, so some interesting things here. These are in kilometers per hour, by the way, kph kilometers per hour. I guess I should say. Um, interesting roll rate. Controllability is one of those hidden stats. It's not on the website, um, and there's some debate over what it means. Uh, by the way, whether it's um, delayed response to control or um, if it's a reduction in the amount of force that you put on uh, the movement in your plane. I'm not sure how that makes sense when I say it that way, but uh, assuming if you move your mouse to the left, you know, it immediately moves left. Uh, does the controllability mean it delays it uh, so you're 83% slower? Does it mean you move with 83% per, uh, of the, you know, projected roll or turn or whatever else? You know, there's some, some question marks about this, or does it delay your movement uh, to the left by 17%? Who knows? We don't know, but we know this is a general stat for how well the plane handles, um, how well you are able to control the plane, I guess I should say. And there's a lot of stats like that uh, here in uh, Game Models 3D that they've mined out of the server that are quite interesting. So uh, let's take a look at what else the Tempest has to offer. So we have a dive speed. You'll notice dive speed is 256. What in the world does that mean? So some of these stats are actually coded in in a particular way that calibrates neither to KPH or, or Imperial or metric, I guess I should say. Uh, and what that means is it's places where, uh, you know, the game model itself or the game uh, environment itself is not literally, you know, X number of kilometers, right? Essentially what they've done is they built a physics model and then they've calibrated that physics model to gameplay and then assigned KPH and MPH numbers and, you know, meters and, and feet of altitude to what feels right in terms of the speed of the game. Um, and so, you know, there's not an actual one-to-one -one scale built within the engine, if that makes sense. And so you'll see uh, numbers like this that are uh, numbers for on the back end, on the server end, which are then translated on your screen and your client to a KPH or MPH number. Um, I believe it's like 3.6 for KPH. I don't know. I don't usually use MPH uh, for this reason because they, they built the game in KPH. You can see here, right? So the client has to translate this into MPH, and it's just a pain to memorize all this. So much of the game, World of Tanks and World of Warplanes, is knowing your opponent, knowing statistics, knowing capabilities. And so, you know, optimal altitude here is 1400 meters but if you're going to know optimum altitude in feet that's something entirely different right and it's often a weird number right so this would be like you know 4,433. I don't know. I'm just picking a number out here, right? But it's harder to memorize 4,433 than it is to memorize 1,400 and just know that. So I stick with the uh, Imperial, or the, excuse me, the metric system rather than Imperial system just because it's easier to remember plane statistics as a result of that. But it's going to have 400 hit points, an odd dive speed here, which, you know, if we multiply that by the 3.6, uh, should be pretty solid. I think it comes out, yeah. Di uh, 920 is what you can see it comes out here in KPH. 
and then stall speed 38.9 which translates to the 140 here so this is what i'm talking about right where there's a raw number in the server and then there's a, a translated number for your client right there so uh interesting 400 health uh so that's definitely in the multi-role category right and it is a multi-role fighter so there you go the, the napier uh, engine 3000 power uh, the top speed at best altitude translates 735. Web time of 18, which is is interesting. It's good. That's pretty normal for a multi-role to have a little extra, right? And uh, we got 3,000 power and a total weight of 5,500. So it's probably not going to accelerate very well. Um, that's not unusual either for multi-roles at this tier. Uh, and then we've got these twin Vickers. So these are going to have a 2.5 auto aim angle. In other words, the game is going to correct for your bad aim up to 2.5 degrees, and it's going to have a dispersion of 0.3. What do these numbers tell us together? 0.3 is incredibly good for dispersion. That is a very low dispersion rate. Um, and 2.5 is a, a decent auto aim angle. It's not really great. Machine guns are usually four. Uh, cannons can be two or three, depending on what they are. And snipers are usually, um, you know, running um, a very low dispersion and, and a you know, low auto aim angle as well. So first blush, it's kind of interesting. It's such a low dispersion uh, with a moderate auto aim angle. And then overheat time of six. Uh, recoil dispersion is a stat that's not used in 2.0. In 1.x, uh, as your guns overheated, they gained recoil, so they were more, became more inaccurate. So they were they lost uh, um, rounds per minute. They slowed down on their rate of fire, but they also became more inaccurate. 2.0, this recoil, disper recoil dispersion stat has been zeroed out for everything. Uh, so that's not a factor anymore. It's just a matter of uh, the RPM slowing down, which is good. It was, it was sort of a double negative to overheat, and so you had to really have some trigger discipline. Now the trigger dis you know, if you don't have good trigger discipline, it just costs you DPS. Um, it doesn't cost you accuracy as well. So 290, that is the DPS. Uh, so that's uh, fairly high uh, for these guns, obviously. Uh, bullet fly distance, 289. So that's actually um, a pretty decent distance um, in terms of this game client. And I'll show you some other numbers as well. I'm, I don't know if that's sniper cannon worthy or not. Um, bullet mass is interesting. So we don't know what this number is, but my suspicion is that it correlates to uh, the critical uh, rate for the gun, how, how likely the gun is to crit something on uh, the higher, t higher tier shells. You know, 47 millimeters is going to have a higher bullet mass. So I suspect that's what that is. I also suspect, by the way, uh, that your RPM rounds per minute, um, you know, deep, the score right here, is uh, tied somehow to the rate of, of fire being created. I don't think that's done per gun. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any stats on that. It might be per class of gun. So it might be machine guns, cannons, and sniper cannons have three different... Um, you know, fire chances assigned to them. And it may be the crits are that way as well, but it's also possible they're assigned to rounds per minute and bullet mass. Otherwise, it's unclear, um, for example, what, what this is doing in the client. You know, what, what it, because our bullets don't actually follow a physical trajectory, right? They don't, <laughs> they don't dive off. They don't arc down in the client. Um, you can't see that happening. Uh, and then bullet speed. And we've talked about muzzle velocity in the last couple of weeks here. So the XFL is up at 280. The Hurricane 2D I just played was 244, I believe. Uh, the, I found out the 110C6 is actually 222. This is 180. So this will be the new lowest muzzle velocity in the entire game you know, outside of ground attack aircraft some of the ground attack aircraft have very low muzzle velocities but in terms of a non-ground attack aircraft this is going to be our new champion of slow bullets uh, which is crazy but you can see all this in here too and that's all I've done is kind of go through these with you uh, to kind of show you what's there. Um, and the last thing they have here is 3D models. So we're going to take a look at that and we'll be able to see what it looks like in the client. So there you can see very, very similar to the pictures. Um, this is the base model. Um, I'm going to make this bigger for you. You can do that. And we got this going here. Make sure that's still, okay, yeah, good. So you can still see that. And uh, one of the interesting things about this is uh, you can change the lighting and stuff down here in the corner, but you can also preview the camouflages. So this is just the base model, and then there's the base camouflage, what you'll see in your hangar when you have no camouflage on it at all. It'll look like this, plus the insignias and markings, obviously. This is just the camouflage. Uh, and then you'll have desert camouflage, which looks like this. And you shall have marine, kind of that standard, uh, blue and green that they like to use in the UK Air Force there. We've got a snow or winter map camouflage. And then we have a woodland camo, which is actually a, a slight variation on this marine. It's just a gray instead of a blue. And then we have your, um, let's see, 
Actually, this may be how it is on the client. And the base, I believe, is the multi-spectrum um, camo, the camo that works on any map. And then in the last couple, you've got premium camos. So you've got this one. Uh, so unclear what this will be. It may be the plus 5% um, to uh, aircraft experience, which usually gets programmed in somewhere. And this is going to be the one I, I can already tell from this. This is going to be the crazy crap. Yeah, this is going to be your... The camo that gives you the absolute best in-game statistics while looking like absolute and utter trash to anyone who um, you know values the <laughs> the historicity of this game and being able to fly historical aircraft. Uh, you know, I know I'm being harsh, but this to me does not belong in the game. Has no place in the game. Um, this is the kind of stuff that mods are built for. You want to you want your planes to look like neon trash. Uh, that's what mods are for. Uh, I don't want any of the game. So, uh, and then uh, kit, which is the third one. So uh, this is um, perhaps uh, another option that'll be in maybe for career experience, maybe aircraft experience, um, or maybe something you can buy at a later date. Um, they've been doing this uh, recently. They did it with, with the Goose and some others, right? Where, you know, there's, <laughs> you buy it with this and then later on they'll, they'll sell you a, a different camo in case you don't like this camo to double dip into the well. Uh, but anyway, these are the camos that are gonna be available for it. Now, this one obviously is, Probably my favorite of the bunch, although more than likely I'll stick with the actual um, camouflages that are available here. Now, so this is Game Models 3D. Now, there is one trick to the website, and that is that when you look at uh, World of Warplanes and check out um, uh, these uh, options here, right, and you go in and do it, and uh, let's say we're looking at where was it? Great Britain, yeah. So you can see in here which ones are... Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, reward planes and which ones are premiums golds are premiums blues are reward planes again there's a theory in the player base not proven but a theory that uh, premium planes um, dating back to the early days actually have a higher credit modifier than what we call reward planes um, and we don't know that that's true but some early research early on in 1.x suggested that was true doesn't necessarily mean it's true anymore it may just be a delineation between planes you could have gotten uh, via marathon versus planes that are just outright being sold right the other thing you'll notice uh, when you come into this if you don't have an account like I do you're going to be able to look at tiers 1 through 7 tiers 8 through 10 are reserved for paid accounts it is $5 to have a paid account on the website it's a one-time fee it is not recurring I have done that um, I, I did it a long time ago so I can assure you you know this, this site is not a scam uh, the five dollars goes to help uh, the guy who runs the site who puts a lot of work and effort into it um, keeping up on these forums and again keeping up on all of these games unpacking the texture models updating things uh, giving you some behind the scenes stuff so this is actually really cool I've talked to the guy who runs the website he's fantastic um, I wish he had uh, a little more uh, time spent on World of Warplanes but I can certainly understand why he has not so uh, this is Game Models 3D. If you want to know some of the behind the scenes on the planes, this is a great place to come for that information. And, to, and I would certainly recommend the um, $5 to be able to access uh, the tiers 8 through 10. So you can also look at, by the way, I think this is helpful as well, uh, bots. So here's all your bot planes, you know, and you're kind of curious. All right, well, shoot, you know, how do I, how do I know I can outturn bot planes at tier 10? Well, you can come in here and look, you know, bot light fighters have a 13.5 turn time. And so, you know, this is, this is kind of stuff that's, you know, kind of helpful because the bots are, are limited in some of these things as well. And uh, so knowing kind of what you're dealing with is helpful. Can I, can I run down a defender heavy fighter at tier 10? Well, yes, probably you can, right? Uh, this is their dive speed. So they're going to max out at 850, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there you go. Now, uh, having said that, I do want to bring up something else that's not on this website. Site, although it is a hidden stat and I have asked the director about this before and he has said he doesn't have time to do it anymore um, and I, I'm hopeful that he would at some point and maybe I'll offer him some money to do this but back in the day um, in addition to uh, these aircraft models that you see the 3d models uh, there was a second model and that was the actual modules that were available within his website and so you can see here i've blown up the image for you uh, this is uh, what the actual game model looks like so when it's doing hit registration when it's determining critical hits all that kind of stuff this is actually what's floating around in the client 
And so you've got engine, cockpit, guns, uh, wings, fuselage, tail, right? Uh, and so these are, and then pilot is kind of the dark purple in the middle here. So if a bullet goes through and it passes through, you know, side to side here, the server makes a determination. Uh, did it cause a critical to the cockpit? Did it cause a critical to um, the pilot? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, actually, I think purple is fuel tank. Is that fuel tank now? I think about it. It might be fuel tank. Anyway, um, and it, this may have changed in 2.0, some of this stuff as well. But uh, nonetheless, there are hitboxes for everything in the client. And I think I can show you better on the next one. But what you don't see here and what was eventually teased out of the client later on uh, by the um, creator of this website is that there are also armor statistics attached to this. Uh, yeah, so blue is the blue is the fuel tanks. So this is fuel tanks, and that's pilot. Um, there are armor statistics attached to this. So just to blow it up a little more for you, and you see down here there are numbers, and and the translation of that: front armor, left, right, front, rear armor, top, bottom, rear absorption, chance of module if hit. Now this is a question mark, and he says that right. I don't know exactly what the numbers mean, and we're going to talk about that for a second. But this is a 109F. So uh, front armor. So if we're looking at the front of the wings here, which is what he's hovering over. Back in the day, you could do this for all the planes in the game with his models so um, front left top all right yeah left right front so uh, left side uh, right side front side so uh, and this is on the wings right so um, this is the armor we don't you know what does the armor mean does that mean that this is the amount by which DPS is reduced uh, that could be um, does it reduce the amount does the armor reduce the amount of critical hit chances that are received or fire chances that could be true as well um, you know, there's some sort of additional calculation that's being done server side that we don't have any insight into. And I'd like to ask XBK about this at some point and see if you might be willing to fill us in a little more on the statistics of this. But it is interesting. And, you know, basically what this means is at some point, you know, when you've been shooting in an airplane and it has no damage is showing up, it's probably because the armor is at work somehow. It could also be hit registration server side, but it could also be the armor model um, as well dealing with that. And for sure, for sure, this armor model reduces the DPS on your plane in some way. Uh, and that's obvious. Um, just to take a, you know, a brief example, uh, let's see. Let's look at maybe like a typhoon or something here. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, so the Hispanos, right? So the Hispanos have firepower of 115 each, which means a DPS of 460 with four of them, right? So that means 450 damage per second. Well, if that were the case, uh, and this uh, planes like this Typhoon have 340 health, you'd be dead in one second, but no one ever dies in a second, right? So something is reducing that damage per second number, and it is these this armor somehow. You know, we'd have to do some testing, some really in-depth testing, or get XPK or someone to explain to us how that actually works. Um, my suspicion from some of the testing I did in 1.x um, is uh, that the absorption number actually actually um, changes, it's not a critical hit modifier. The absorption number reduces the raw amount of damage by a percentile factor, and then the armor itself then is a flat reduction of that. So, you know, if a 20 millimeter cannon shell hits the wing of this, you know, from our other page there, it's doing 115 damage times 0.4 minus 10 or 20, depending on where it hits. And, and I should say this also, by the way, in case you didn't know, this 115, just like in World of Tanks, this is an average number. Uh, so the reality is it's a range, a low and high range that average 115, and there's a random number roll. So, you know, when you shoot, it's going to do an average of 115 damage per second. But the reality is it's, 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 more or less than that, depending on uh, how the random number rate goes. So that means, you know, this could be, I don't know, you know, usually in tanks, the world, the range is, I think, 25%. You know, so this could be down to, roughly speaking, 70, 79 damage, something like that. Um, and, and so, you know, in some of these low, uh, low damage shots, because you're doing 420 rounds per minute, uh, 115, this is really hard to calculate in my head. I probably should have picked a better example, but... Um, you know, roughly speaking, you know, DPS 115 times 60. Oh, this is a pain. Let's go to something that's that's more easier to calculate. Let's go one of the sniper aircraft. Uh, so Germany. Uh, let's look at sniper planes. Uh, so the, the Horton has the snipers, right? Yeah, those are 90. We want something slower than that. We want a 60 round a second one. Let's look. Is it this one? 
Uh, that's 240. Oh, you know what? We don't need to be in German. Uh, we need to be in the Russian planes. That's what we need to do. So, yeah, Russian planes. Let's look at some of the slow-firing Russian planes. So, SU-9s, 45. Yeah, 30 rounds per minute. Okay, so 30 rounds per minute, uh, 30 rounds uh, per minute, 150 DPS. So that means that you're firing two shells per second, or one shell every two seconds, excuse me. So that means each shell does 300 damage, right? But we know these shells don't actually do three. You don't see 300 disappear right at a time. Uh, instead, what you see is some random number. I think it's modified by the armor. So uh, when you have a uh, firepower of a smaller cannon and you have a different rounds per minute, you know, each of those shells uh, that's going out the, whether it's four or five shells a second, you know, each one that hits is doing a certain amount of damage, a smaller amount of damage, which then is being absorbed and modified by this armor. So that's all conjecture as best I can tell you from experience in playing the game and uh, the little bit of testing I was able to do on 1.x. You know, we don't know now, you know, that's you know, this could interact in a different way in the system. We're not sure. Uh, but this tells you a little bit about the planes that you deal with. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, for example, pusher planes tend to lose their engine a good bit. Planes like the Arrow or the J4M because there is an engine hitbox in the back of the plane as well. Um, and so you're more likely to get a hit there. And some of the planes with uh, bigger cockpits or tail gunners tend to end up having crew injuries a good bit uh, because the cockpit sizes are, are more you know, larger, basically. And uh, so you have to deal with all of that. So uh, just, a, you know, some inner, inner workings of the game uh, for you today. And again, you know, recommend this website. It does great things. Uh, there's a lot of games on here as well. You can go in and check warships and tanks and some of that kind of stuff and see the behind the scenes on it. But uh, Predominantly, I'm using it for World of Warplanes and um, and have for a while. So interesting stuff. Fun to take a look at the Tempest. This will be an Easter marathon. You know, I would guess. Uh, so Easter is coming up on March 31st. So I'm guessing this might be an April marathon. That would make sense, probably. Um, yeah, maybe a couple of weeks before we see anything on it. But uh, anyway, hope this is helpful for you. Uh, again, you can use the website, but you know there's some stuff here that um, you really can only find here uh, that gives you some insight into things. For example, um, some stuff so floating the game files. This is a good example. Here's the original B29 Super Fortress, and here's the C. <laughs> and uh, you can you can tell some things here. I'll just I'll throw one at you. Top speed at best altitude 670, right? So check this out. 560. So, so the B29C was buffed through the roof from the Tech Tree model uh, in, a, in a way that's just absolutely uncalled for. Um, and it's one of the things that's frustrating about it is, is you can see clearly they made some changes to it right before they kicked it out the door. And this has always been the suspicion with this why the USA line stopped right here with the Dominator, uh, the B-32, because the 8, 9, and 10 were going to be so overpowered, and they had no idea how to control that, and probably still don't, uh, which is why we'll probably never get the rest of, rest of the tech tree there. But there are some other fun things in here, too, like, hey, you know, maybe one day we could get a Falk Wolf 200 because the game model's in the game already. Wouldn't that be cool if we had an option to have a Tier 8 German premium bomber? of four engines like this, but you know, only if they get the uh, balancing right. So you can kind of pull through here and see see some stuff that's pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of uh, vestigial remnants of a, a bygone time in the in the, in the uh, game files. So hope this is helpful for you. I know it's a little bit dry, no gameplay going on in the background, but I wanted to kick it out the door and hope it's helpful for people to generate some discussion. Feel free to leave comments below. If you have theories on how the armor system and hitbox system works, maybe you've heard a different story or did some testing of your own, or maybe this is brand new to you, but I would love to hear your two cents on how this might function in the game, um, and if you have any ideas on how we can test it or learn more about it. And like I said, I do plan to ask XBK after this video publishes if he will comment, um, you know, much as we did with the um, kind of no clouds mod, just to see uh, see what might come of this. And who knows, maybe we'll get some interesting information. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, if so, throw a thumbs up this way. Uh, biggest thing though is just letting other people know that this site is here um, and that these videos are here and not just mine, but everyone's. You know, there's a lot of great uh, content creators uh, um, for World of Warplanes uh, trying to help you know build the community, build visibility, which is something the game needs. Um, and all of us are kind of hopefully working together to, to make and promote this game 
became uh, an awesome place for all of you. So share the video, uh, if nothing else, and uh, bring other people into it and uh, get their two cents on it as well. And uh, again, comments, questions, throw those in the chat below, and I will catch you guys later this week. Good luck and good hunting.